Hello guys, welcome back to this hair modeling video series. In this video, I would like to show you how I tackled making this kind of real-time hair, which I got inspiration from a character called Nera Brisgretti from my favorite game of all time, Dragon Quest V. I was playing this game the other day and I like her hairstyle, so I thought it would be fun to make real-time hair of that. And also, it would be a great challenge for me to tackle and improve my skills. It took me around 3 days to make this and it was quite long and tedious process so in order to make this video not like 5 hours long, I would like to do more of a breakdown of how I created this hair and share some tips and tricks along the way. Before we start, I just wanted to mention that I am still learning every day and my way of doing things is not necessarily the best method. It can be certainly more optimized if you are thinking of putting this in the game. So please keep that in mind. With that being mentioned, let's do it! So this is the model I have made the other day for quick anatomical and other studies. I made very simple clothing and some 3D sketch of the hair. At this moment, I didn't know what I was exactly going to make. I was just experimenting with what kind of hairstyle would look good on this character. Sketching process is the first process of real-time hair creation. And it is really important because in this stage, you can easily explore about volume and shape of the hair without having to deal with actual haircuts and lay down rough idea of how the hair would look in the end. So make sure not to skip this process. It doesn't need to be super clean or polished. It just needs to be representative to the hairstyle you're going for. Once you have this, you're going to bring this over to the blender and start next process. The next process would be to create a hair texture. I have already made a video about it, so if you don't know how to make one, please go check that one out. But when you are making the hair texture, it is a good idea to follow some reference images of opacity map. You can find those on the internet for free. Some places where you can find those are Google, Outstation, Pinterest, and so on. But you already have some great opacity map in the add-on folder too. I would like to have variation to my hair, so I usually create 9 to 10 hair texture on the map. 2 for layer 0, 3 for layer 1, 3 for layer 2, and 2 for layer 3. Take your time making your hair texture and experiment with techniques as your hair texture is foundation with your hair and depends on it, it can make your hair either good or bad. So once you have prepared your hair textures, let's move on to the next process. The next process will be to start blocking out hair layer 0. We are going to append the plane and place it to the lower part of a hairline on the back of the head, like so. You are always starting from the lower portion of the head and working your way up to the top. I have three sections of the planes as these will give me more control when we generate haircuts from the grid as opposed to have one big mesh to generate haircuts from. But feel free to experiment with this. And now go to the edit mode, mark the root as a shop by pressing Ctrl E. This will tell the add-on to generate haircuts from this root to the tip. We are going to be doing this operation many many times, so I would recommend you to add Mark Shop to your quick favorite by hovering over to it, right click, add to quick favorite. After this, you can access this command by pressing the Q on the keyboard. You can assign as many quick favorite as you want, so if you have any features that you will use often, you should include it in the quick favorite. So now, we are going to generate haircuts by pressing Ctrl Shift H and generate curves from grid. For this layer, we are only looking to cover up the scope, so you can have good numbers of haircuts on the head, remove the noise, and reduce the random spacing. These values can be different depends on the scale of the object, so play around with it and see what works for you. Once you have the settings you like, it is super handy to create a preset for the settings so that you can bring the settings back anytime you want. Now, we are going to assign the UVs. So we go to the image editor, bring your hair texture, and click hair UVs. And we are going to assign UV to only hair layer 0 texture. We could assign UV to all the hair texture at once, but then add-on will assign hair texture to the hair cuts randomly, even the textures that you don't need for the layer you are working on. So for this project, we are going to assign the UV for only hair texture that we need. Now, we can move on to create more hair cuts. So just like we did before, duplicate the hair grid, put this to where you want it to be, and repeat the process. The placement of a hair grid and amount of hair cuts you can generate totally depends on what you are making this hair for. If you are making it for the video game, you should try your best to maximize the coverage of scope as few hair cuts as possible. If not, then don't worry about it too much. So these are the hair grid I created for this layer in the end. And this is what the layer looks like with hair cards. 
Here, you can see the big gap between the hair cards, and it is quite looking bad. But don't worry, we are going to fill this gap by creating the inner layer of hair later. So now, let's move on to create hair layer 1. In this layer, we are looking to break up the repetitive look of the previous hair layer and also to create the design of the hair and not so much about covering the scalp anymore. So duplicate the hair grid from previous layer and start creating the shape. In this layer, we are going to fill the gap in the inner part of the hair so we can make this hair look more realistic and not look like a bunch of a thin layer of a fake hair. To assign the UV, we are going to the material tab on the right and press this button to create new material. And then go to the image editor and assign UV to the new set of hair textures. So for this kind of hairstyle with uniform look, I tend to create the hair grid on the one side and mirror it over to the other side and modify the shape. It saves me some time and make the hair look more consistent. At the same time, it would make your hair look more boring, so maybe it is not a good idea. And as for the side hair, I left some space in this area as I need to fit more hair later on. Once you're done, taper the hair by pressing Ctrl Shift H and taper curve. And here's how the layer looks in the end. So now, we are going to move on to create hair layer 2. For this layer, we need to add a variation and flow to the hair, so when you generate the hair, make sure to add more noise and random spacing. This is really going to help with adding life to the hair, so take your time and make it as good as possible. But all the techniques we use are pretty much the same as always. Prepare some hair grid, generate the hair cards, and manually tweak the shape of the hair. And don't forget to assign the new UVs and taper the hair as well.
and here's how the layout looks in the end. Now, finally, we are going to make the layer 3, which is known as Flyway Layer. This layer adds more flow to the hair, and it is important to make the hair look realistic and convincing. We don't need that much of a haircut for this layer compared to the other ones, but we definitely need more noise, flow, random length, and we also need to assign the random tilt to the hair by pressing Ctrl Shift H and click on random tilt. And its texture is really transparent as you can see. The good technique you can use when you're making this kind of transitioning hair is to use draw hair functionality. To use this, activate the draw hair on the hair tool add on tab, select your body mesh and press D and left click and drag to draw the hair. This is a great way to quickly add hair cards and add more detail. By adjusting the settings on the tab, you can change many things to achieve the look you are going for. From here, you can manually adjust the hair with the hair modeling tool or in the edit mode. But you will probably notice that it can be really hard to position the hair in the exact position that you want with the hair tool. So the solution for this is to use a linear deformer. To use it, press Ctrl D, left click and drag to draw this kind of line. It acts in a similar way as transpose line from ZBrush, but if you don't know about it, this line basically determines how the operations such as move, rotate, tilt, and so on are executed. So if I draw the line from the root of a hair to the tip and move or rotate it, it acts like this. But if I move this origin point to here, you get different result. I think it is super useful functionality and I use it all the time. Using hair modeling tool and linear deformer will speed up your workflow and it is way to go in my opinion. Once you're done with it, you should have all these four layers of hair and you can now finalize the hair by pressing Ctrl Shift H, finalize hair. This will create a new mesh with one material with UV all being laid down correctly. From here, you can do whatever you want. You can make ambient occlusion, assign random vertex color, random weight and so on and export it to be used in other softwares or game engines. And yeah, that's all I wanted to share in this video. If you're learning the art of real-time hair creation like myself, you will probably fail a lot just like I did. You should never get discouraged and give up. Try to learn from all the mistakes you make each time and most importantly, try to have fun. In my opinion, you will not learn well if you're not having fun, so. But anyway, I hope this video was somewhat useful to you and hope it made you feel you want to go tackle some fun project on your own. So yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. Until next time, see you later.